Good evening and welcome everyone to our free class number 257. And in this class, we're going to be designing an automated invoicing system using Microsoft Excel. And we're going to be combining both the use of formulas and VBA macros. But before we get started, let us first review the invoicing template that we're going to be designing and see how it works and then later redesign it from the scratch. All right, so let me exit this PowerPoint presentation and head over to Microsoft Excel so that we can start looking at this particular template. Assuming that this is the invoice that we are preparing, as you can see, we have added in some items here, the item descriptions, the quantities, the unit price, the amount, as well as the tax component right there. Now, when you scroll down here, you'll see the grand total invoice amount as well as the amount in words now let us assume i would like to add another item right here i'll come over to this cell i'll just tap the drop down and i add this product as soon as i do that you can see the description is added in automatically what i can do is to give in the quantities that have been ordered here and all these other columns will auto calculate as you can see our grand total invoice amount has now grown to 77,172. Okay. Similarly, if I want to change the customer to whom this invoice is generated for, I can come over here and change from the drop down like so. The client ID will pop up automatically here, as well as some other details about my customer. The invoice number here will be auto generated for me. You can see I'm also capturing the invoice date and I'm using the today function to make this one dynamic. And the due date is a simple calculation based on the number of days that have been given here in the term. So if I change this term to, let's say, 30 days, you can see this invoice due date will change automatically. If I change this one to 90, you can see the due date will change automatically. If I make it 60, you can see the due date adjusts automatically. So feel free to make sure that you customize the terms of your choice now on top here you can see we have a number of buttons that we can use in this invoice now let us take an example i want to actually save this invoice to the record of invoices worksheets because remember we have to keep records of the invoices that we are issuing i'll come back over to the invoice template worksheet here and let's say click add to records when i do this watch what happens this macro will run and when i come over to the records of invoices worksheet you can see a record has automatically been created here the invoice number the customer the customer id the person who issued the invoice the invoice amount itself the date of issue and so on and so forth all right now when i come back to the invoice template maybe i would like to maintain a copy of this particular invoice so that maybe i can make changes in the future in case a customer calls back and says you know what please make changes and add these items as well i can save a copy of this invoice as an excel file and redirect it in any folder of my choice so that when a customer makes changes to their invoice it will be very easy for me to do that so i'll tap this particular button here save as excel file like so and watch what happens so this will create a copy of this same invoice now let me just move over to the folder where i directed this to save i'll come over to this particular area you can see this folder that i've created here called the invoice records now if a customer wanted to make changes to this invoice it will be very easy for me to update okay we can actually decide to save as a pdf directly maybe you do not want to add these invoice details to your records of invoice you straightforward wanted a copy you can come and click here save as pdf this will also create a pdf copy so when i go back to the folder like so you will find this particular copy saved right there let me just go back to the invoice records folder you can see this particular pdf copy will be available now we also have another button here that says create new invoice how do we use this button let's assume that we have done generating this particular invoice now we want to create a fresh new invoice for our new customer or for any other customer in our database i'll tap this button here create new invoice and watch what happens immediately i do that you can see some parts of my invoice have been cleared 
and I get this notification here that says your next invoice number is 1017. So when I accept this like so, you can see my invoice number is generated automatically and I'm right into where I can actually select the client details. I'll go for the drop down here and select any other customer. Let's go for this one here. You can see the details about this client popping up. Now let us add in some items here. I'll go for the first one, Apple. How many are they ordering? Let's say five. I'll add another product here, Techno. How many are they ordering right here? Let's say seven. And I can keep adding as many items as I can. Okay. I'll go ahead and save the details of this invoice to my records of invoices by just tapping this button like so. Now, when I come back and check in my records of invoices, you'll see this particular invoice has been added automatically. Now, assuming that we'd like to create another invoice for our brand new customer that we have just acquired. Now, this new customer is not existing in our database. That means when I come over to this particular drop down, they will not be available. We need to add them as new customer. So I'll use this button right here, add a new customer. This form will pop up here. Let us create some details here. Maybe this customer will be 1018. That is the client ID and the client names. I'll call this customer Birunji Shivan like so. And for the country, let's use Uganda. And their telephone number I'll put in mine here and for the email let me just create a dummy email right here okay now I can actually submit this record when I do this and close this form this new customer that I've just created will be available here for selection and I will say create new invoice my new invoice number will be 1018 which I'll accept and say okay I'll come back to the drop down here and pick my newly added customer like so and now I can start adding in some items like so as usual. And now I can go ahead and generate this particular invoice. Maybe let me just add in any quantities here just for demo purposes and add this to the records of invoices. Similarly, you could also want to generate a new invoice for your new service that you have just created or a new product that you have just gotten. So we can use the add new product button right here. Let me just tap here once this new form will pop up maybe I'll give this product ID number eight and the product name will be Infinix 320 and maybe the price we are selling this at 6,000 and for the product description here I'll just put in anything just for demo purposes I'll call this one Infinix 5G and 8GB RAM 312GB of ROM and maybe 18 megapixel front camera. I'll just save and add the details to my product list. Now when I close this particular dialog box and come over to the products worksheet here you can see our new product is added. So when I come over to the invoice template and maybe want to add this new item I will check if it's available in the drop down. Yes it is. You can see it's the last item we have just created right here and I can add it as our new item. All right, so that's how in brief this particular invoicing template works. If you'd like to grab a copy of this particular same invoice, the finished product, please head over to the description of this video. Click the link that I've provided to grab yourself a copy. But in case you want to learn how to create this from the scratch, please keep watching this video from this point till the end. And if you find this interesting, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like the video, and also please share this with another colleague that you may think might get interested in learning how to create such things inside Microsoft Excel. All right, for now, let us actually start redesigning this from scratch. So what I will do is to create a blank new Excel file. So I'll go for new blank workbook and let us actually save this on the desktop. I'll do save as I'll call this one my invoicing template and because we're going to be writing some macros and VBA I'll make sure that I save this file as an Excel macro enabled workbook and there you go I will rename this worksheet to invoice template what I can do is to minimize my new workbook and make sure that this one is closed. I'll come back to my newly created workbook and now let us start 
setting up this invoice i'll come over to row number seven and highlight a bunch of cells and then come over to the home tab and create a merger in here and punch in here invoice i'll make it bold and for the alignment i'll make sure it aligns in the middle let's change the font size to something like 36 and then for this first column a i right mouse click column width i'll give it around 15 and say okay I'll move down a little bit in row number 11 and I'll start punching in here from and then I put in my address here open training camp prime tower building Nakulavie plot 270 block 10 Hoima Road Kampala Uganda let me also add my telephone number so it says 0773523826 let me also make sure that this word tail here is bold control b i'll make these two bold as well i'll move over to column e in row number 11 and i'll say build to then i'll jump one single row right here and in here i'll punch in here client country and email in column g row number 12 i'll add my client id and let me also make sure that it's aligning to the left like so I'll make this bold as well. I'll come over to column J in row number 11 here and I add my invoice number, invoice date, due date. I also add the term in days like so. I'll make sure that this column is wide enough to accommodate this text here and make everything bold. And in this L address, I'll have my invoice number. So let me just punch in any number 10. 15 and for the invoice date i'll use the today function i'll say equals today so that this prints in today's date but i'll change the format here i'll come back to the number format and in here i'll choose the appropriate date format that i want let me go for this one here for the term here i'll add a drop down i'll say alt dl and then i'll use drop down list i can use 30 days 60 days and 90 days say okay so i can actually pick from the drop down list as you can see now for us to calculate our due date i'll come in here and say equals today plus the term or the days hit enter key on the keyboard now when this particular drop down is activated you can see the due date updates automatically in here i can change this one to 90 and there you go you can see if an invoice is issued today it will be due on the 10th of july 2024 if we are giving it 90 days but if we give it 30 days there you go you can see it will be due on the 11th of may 2024 let us scroll down a little bit here in row number 17 here i'll say product name and in here i'll say description let me jump over to column g and add quantity unit price amount tax which is 18 percent as well as my total column right there let me just give this particular column headers a different field color and the font color will be white and let me also make it bold i will highlight this entire part from row number 17 all the way through to 33 and let me add borders because the text string for our description is quite long i'll make sure that from b all the way through to f is merged so i'll use the merge across option and let me make sure that the description is sitting in the middle alignment now for all these other rows from 18 all the way through to 33 i'll also merge across like so i'll scroll a little bit down and let me just skip one single row in between here and in column j i will highlight from here all the way through to column k and move down at least three rows and also give them all borders so for these ones i'm gonna be merging across and in here we shall have our subtotal the tax which is 18 percent as well as the grand total and for our grand total i'll make sure that i give it a different background color so let me go with something like this and for the font i'll make sure that it's bold and for the borders let me just give it top and double bottom border like so 
I'll merge row 35 and 36 and punch in here amount in words. Align it in the middle and make it bold. I'll also merge from cell B35 all the way through to H36. I'll make sure that the text that we'll see it here, which will be amount in words, is aligning in the middle and it's actually to the left. I also highlight from row 37 all the way through to row 41 like so. And for this one, I will actually give outside borders like that. And I'll come in here and put in my payment information, the bank name, the bank account, sort code, as well as the IBAN if you're going to be doing international transactions. Of course, my bank is Centenary Bank and my account, I'll just generate random numbers here. Let me just change the format to no decimal places. And for the sort code, this one is going to be one. I'm just generating random numbers here. This is not realistic. It's just made up information. For this one, I'll just say CB, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever you may want to put here. In column F38 here, I'll say issued by, then I'll have a drop down here for my sales rep names. But for now, let me just punch in here my name. And I also make sure that the issued by is bold. Our subtotal and the 18% tax here will be bold. And I also align them to the right. Our invoice design is starting to take shape. Now what I will do is to bring in our company logo. So what I will do is to come over to the insert tab under illustrations. I'll go for pictures. And let us just place it over the cell from this PC. I navigate over to my desktop and locate my image. This is my logo right here. I say insert. When it comes in here, what I can do is to crop it out and remove some or reduce the size. I'll continue reducing it in size and bring it on top right here. I'll make these particular titles here bold. And for the payment information, because this is a title, I will actually merge across, bring it in the middle and also make it bold. For our invoice number text, I will need this one to be red and bold as well. Now the next thing that we shall do is to create our worksheets here. So I'll add another worksheet here that will have all our customers. I'll also add another worksheet that will also keep our products and services. And I also create another worksheet that will have all our records of invoices. So these are the three extra worksheets that I need. Now in here I will create a table and of course in column A we shall have the client ID. In column B we shall have the names, country, telephone and lastly we shall have the email address. But you could actually add more columns as you can. I'm just adding a few just for training purposes. What I can do is I will format this as a table, control T on the keyboard. My table has a does option must be ticked. This will give you a table and I'd like to give this table a name. I will call this table customers. Hit enter key on the keyboard. In our products worksheet in column A, we shall have our product number, the name of the product or service, the price and also the description. I'll also format this as a table, control T on the keyboard. My table has headers and okay. Let's make sure that we call this table product. Hit enter key on the keyboard. Now inside our records of invoices, I will also create some column headers. And the first one will be the invoice number. Column B will be the customer. In column C, we shall have our customer ID. And in column D, we shall put in the sales rep, invoice amount, date of issue, due date, and then we also need the invoice status as to whether it's paid or not yet paid. We shall also add a document link here. And in column J, we shall record the time and date when this particular record was created. So I can call this one create record time. Feel free to convert this one into a table as well, but let us leave it as a normal range. 
I'll highlight all the column headers and change the background fill color and the font to white and make it bold. I will enlarge these columns a little bit. So I'll just say column width. Let me just make it 10. And maybe for the customer, I will widen it a little bit as well as the document link. All right. Now, almost all our four worksheets are ready. Now, what we need to do is to come over to our invoice template and start configuring in some formulas and then later on start also creating some macros that will help us automate some of the tasks. But before we do that, I'll come over here to uh, this section and make sure that this particular text strings are aligning to the right. I'll also make them bold and I'll also highlight all these three rows and also merge across because in here we shall have our client names, the country and the email address and in here we shall have our customer ID. Before we start bringing in our formulas, let us first create the buttons that we saw on top here. So what I will do is I'll come over to the insert tab under the illustrations. I'll go for shapes and let me just insert a shape. I'll come and draw uh, this one right here. Now for the shape fill, I'll make sure that I give it the purple color and the shape outline. I'll say no outline. I'll right mouse click and say edit text in here. We shall have add to records. This will be our add to the records button. I'll make sure that the text inside is aligning in the middle and I also make it bold and increase the font size to something like this. And I also bring in some icons here. I'll go back to the insert tab, illustrations. I check over for some icons. Because this is going to be our save button, I will search here for save icon and I can pick from the list here. Maybe I'll pick this one here, insert. When this icon appears in here, I'll resize it and bring it in here. And what I can do under the graphics format, I will change the fill color to white. And I also select this first shape, right mouse click and group all of them so that they can move as one object like so. I'll just replicate this and for this one, I'll call this one save as Excel file. So I'll say save as Excel file. And maybe I will ungroup this for a moment and remove this particular icon, enlarge it a little bit. So for me to bring in the icon for Excel here, I'll head over to the internet. Let me just switch over to the browser and search in here for Excel logo. So I'll pick any of this one. Let me just take this. I right mouse click on the logo and then say copy image. Come back to the Excel file and then control V to paste. This will appear right here. It seems to be a little bit big. I will reduce the size. And also I'll make sure that I crop it out so that I can reduce it completely like so. And now I'll continue reducing it and then bring it right here. And I now select this particular shape, right mouse click and then group them one more time. I also replicate this holding the control shift key on my keyboard to create another button. So this one will be save as PDF file. I'll make sure that this icon is removed and I'll head back over to the internet and pick the PDF logo. So I'll just punch in here PDF logo. Maybe I'll go with this one here right mouse click and then say copy image come back to my excel workbook and then control v so this one will come in but it will look a little bit big you have to reduce the size and also crop it out so let me do that Let 
reduce it completely and bring it right here and now with it selected i also select this shape and then right mouse click and group all of them together let me also duplicate and create another button here and this one will be for creating a new invoice so i remove whatever is here and i say create a new invoice And I'll get rid of the PDF logo. So I will duplicate this as well, like so. And let me also create another copy, the final button right there. For this one, I'll change it to add new customer. And this one will change to add new product. All right. So for me to add the icons for these three buttons, what I will do, I'll come back to the insert tab, illustrations, and then I click on icons. I will pick this plus icon right there and I also take this one and for my create a new invoice I will pick something let me just punch in here document maybe I will take this one right here now I have all the three I will insert them in one go and there you go I can actually resize them like so I will start picking one by one and place them in their appropriate positions like so and for the graphics format i will change this fill color to white there you go let me also take this plus symbol right there maybe i make it a little bit bigger graphics format fill color to white and for this one i will just make it a little bit bigger and bring it right here and for the graphics format i also make it white like so all right now our buttons are starting to take shape what i can do is to group all these shapes together right mouse click group come back here click on this icon click on the shape right mouse click and group come back here click on the icon click on the shape right mouse click and group all of them okay now that we have finished our buttons let us start configuring in some formulas and the first thing that I will do is to create the drop-down list here for our products okay so to do that I'll come over here to the products worksheet let me just create random products here now assuming that these are the products that we so far have in our products table we would like to come over to the invoice template and make them available for selection here but again we need to make sure that as new products come in here the drop down list here is able to update so how do we do that we shall use the indirect function let me just go back to the products table and show you how this is done so when i come over to this cell for example and say equals and i point over to the products names this is how the table structure is giving me the address of this range it's giving me the table name as well as the column so if i had for example if i had this same naming here i just call this one product and then open square brackets names if i came over to this cell and said equals indirect and then i give this particular text right here close parenthesis and hit enter this will pick all the items that we have in this table if i added another one here let me say add in the ninth a product and maybe I call this one HP or I can just say Dell laptop you can see immediately I do that because I'm actually referring to this particular text right here inside my indirect function you can see that Dell laptop has been added automatically if I added another one let's say maybe I'm adding in here Samsung laptop immediately i do that you can see the list updates 
automatically so this is the formula that we're gonna be using inside our drop down list and get rid of whatever we have here and come back to the invoice template highlight this entire range like so and then on my keyboard i'll say alt dl to open the data validation dialog box and in here i'll go for a drop down list and for the source i'll say equals i use my indirect function that we have just seen and this time i'll be pointing over to the column header here which i've just given that looks exactly like the way how our table is referring to that dynamic range so i'll pick a17 close parenthesis and click ok immediately i do that and come over to the drop down list you can see all my products will be available now in case i moved back here to the table and maybe added in another product here i'll call this one dell laptop maybe we are selling this at 1000 and maybe for the description of this laptop it's 8 gb ram and maybe 14 inch wide screen and so on and so forth okay now when i come over to the invoice template i need to make sure that this new product i've just added is available for selection and yes it is because we are using the indirect function here if you want to know more about how the indirect function works please refer to our classes that we have so far had on advanced data validation with formulas i think we covered the indirect function right there now if a product is selected here what i need is the description here should pop up automatically okay so how do i do that i'll use my xlookup function okay i'll come back here and say equals x lookup what am i looking up for i'll be looking up for the product that will be selected in a18 comma from which table remember i've just given my products table a proper name we have just called it product okay and i will open the column that i'm interested in working with i want to look from the product names column close square brackets what do i want to return well where do i want to return from the return array argument i'll still go back to the product table and i want to return the description so i'll move down over to the description column here close the square brackets if it's not found what do you want me to return of course i want you to return blank and i'm gonna be doing an exact match i put a zero and close my x lookup from here when i hit enter key of course because techno is selected here you can see the description popping up automatically if i selected apple there you go you can see the description of this product pops up automatically if i go for samsung you can see similar the description changes okay now that's the same formula that i need to use here to pick my my prices okay i'll come in here and say equals x lookup what am i looking up for uh, this particular product where am i looking it up from inside the products table and i will use the names column and the return array will be from the products table as well and i'll be interested in returning the price and in case it's not found i want you to show me nothing and the match mode will be zero exact match close the extra cup from here and hit enter key on the keyboard there you go you can see the price for this particular product pops up automatically right here what i can do is to just do some simple formatting here and i'll make sure that this one is formatted as a currency with zero decimal places like so okay now the amount the tax and these other columns will be calculated using other formulas but for now if for example there is nothing selected here definitely you can see i get nothing i'll just select something here maybe techno you can see these items will be able to pop up so i can double click or drag this formula so that i can populate all these other cells i'll do the same right here 
and there you go now if i picked a product here let's say sony you can see the price and the description will pop up automatically if i picked itel you can see the description and the prices will pop up automatically okay now for the amount this will be a simple formula here that will be the quantities ordered multiplied by the unit price enter on the keyboard this one gives us zero but when i add for example they are ordering for two items here you can see the amount will pop up if this one is gonna be ordering four and then i drag this formula down you can see of course we shall have some errors on some of these particular sales uh, that do not have numbers here but if someone ordered for three pieces here you can see the value will auto populate now to avoid these errors showing simply because there is no any item selected here what i can do is to wrap this formula into the if error i'll say if error the value argument this particular formula should calculate otherwise it should show me nothing to make sure that my template looks tidy so this is the formula that i need to drag down like so and there you go you can see now wherever there is no product selected here it shows us nothing but when we select a product just as an example i'll go for hp laptop you can see these numbers will put auto populate and what i only need is to punch in here the quantities i'll go for six and there you go and for our tax component of course this will be a simple calculation i'll say equals the amount multiplied by 18 percent okay so 18% of 6,600 is 1,188, I believe. And of course, for us to eliminate the errors, I will introduce the if error. And I want to show nothing if there is an error. Okay. And I will drag this formula down like so. And for the totals, of course, this will be the summation of these two. So I'll say equals sum of these two numbers right here and close brackets so i'll drag this formula down to populate these other cells like so and you will note that where we have no values selected here or where there is no item selected you can see we have zeros here and this is making our template look a little bit untidy so to hide these zeros where there are no values supplied i'll use an if statement so i'll just simply come in here and open the if i'll say if and my logical test will simply be if in a18 here if it does not equal to blank comma then the sum function should run otherwise i'll come at the end and say show me nothing i close this if from here and enter on the keyboard now let us drag this formula down and see if our zeros will get hidden and yes it does all right now let us move down here and populate our subtotal so our subtotal will be a simple sum function here i will sum this amount column like so make sure that is locked a four key on the keyboard and close brackets and for the tax component i'll say equals and then i sum up the tax column like so up to this range make sure that it's completely fixed close brackets and enter now if i want to populate my grand total this will be a simple formula i'll say equals sum of these two numbers f4 key close brackets enter on the keyboard so this is our grand total invoice amount i'll move back up right here and let us populate this area here all right we need to automate the customer details here okay so i'll come here and use my customers table but of course you can see inside my customers table there is no record as of now let us go in and punch in some random records here now assuming that in our customers database these are the only few customers that we have as of now i'll just zoom in a little bit so that you can see the details what we need to do here is to come back to the invoice template and pick from the customer name if i came here and said equals and then i point over to the customer names right here you see the naming convention that i get here from my table 
it gives me the table name which is customers and then the names and therefore I know that this will help us inside our indirect function okay so what I will do I'll get rid of what is printed here come back to the invoice template and in here I'll punch in here the table name in text form I'll call this one customers square brackets and then names okay so I want to use the customers table the names column so that I can automate my drop down list here for the client I click in this cell alt dl on the keyboard and then I'll come back for data validation list and for the source I'll say equals I use the indirect function and I'll point it over to this cell address e12 close brackets and say okay now when I come and click in the drop down here you can see our current customer list will be able to pop up here now if I came back to the customers table and maybe added another customer right here I'll call this customer Mwevesa Davis it is from Uganda for the phone number here I'll say plus two five six seven seven three five two three assuming that that's the phone number and for the email I just create a dummy email address here now when I head back over to the invoice template and check inside my client drop down list here I should see Muevesa popping up right here for selection now what I can do to populate the country or to print in the email address I'll use whatever I selected here let's go with maybe this customer I'll use the xlookup function here xlookup the lookup value of course will be any value that is selected in F13 comma and the lookup array we shall use the customers table this time and we shall be picking from from the names column okay in the return array we shall still go back to the customers table and we shall be interested in returning their country so I will return the country column right there and if it's not found which message can I print you say not found comma and I'm doing an exact match I'll put a zero close the X lookup from here so you can see this guy comes from Ethiopia similarly I can return the email using the X lookup as well I'll say X lookup the lookup value will be the customer selected up there comma I will be searching it from the customers table from the names column and the return array will still go back to the customers table and we want to return the email address so I'll move down to the email address column and if not found of course we shall say not found and we are doing an exact match I'll put a zero and enter on the keyboard okay so to make sure that our email shows in its entirety I will make sure that I highlight this range and come back here and say merge across now if I change the customer name here to maybe Davis like so you can see the country updates as well as the email address if I pick maybe this invoice is going to this guy here you can see their country updates as well as the email address so ideally we are done configuring in our formulas and one little thing that I need to do is I will highlight these text strings here and align them to the left and I need to write one last formula here that will bring in our client ID so I'll say equals X lookup the lookup value of course will be the customer that is selected here and we're gonna be searching from the customers table which particular column of course from the names column and we want to return from still we go back to the customers table and we want to return the ID the client ID so I'll go with this particular column close square brackets if not found I'll say not found and I'm gonna be doing an exact match so I put a zero close X lookup from here and enter on the keyboard you can see the client ID is also returned automatically here if I picked another client let's say I go with this one here you can see the client ID changes as well as the country and the email address all right 
having finished setting up our formulas inside our invoice template now let us go ahead and write some VBA macros that will automate some of the tasks the first macro that we would like to write is this one that will add or create records and add them into the records of our invoices worksheet right here to do that now what I will do is head over to the developers tab right here and go to visual basic but in case you do not have the developer tab turned on on your side what you will do is to right mouse click anywhere on your ribbon and say customize ribbon this will open the excel options dialog box and what you need to do is to come over and make sure that you place a check mark right here on the developer tab and then you say okay it will become available on your ribbon for me i'll just click on the developer tab and open the visual basic editor now when the visual basic editor opens what i need to do is to come over to the insert tab and let us insert a module and inside this module we shall create a sub procedure here so i'll say sub and this one i'll call it record of invoices or record of invoice so inside this sub procedure or sub routine i'll start creating some variables that will store our data so i'll say create variables that will store our data so i'll say deem invoice number because i'd like to store the invoice number as long let me minimize this so that we can keep switching over to worksheets as you can see what we are doing so why do i say dim invoice number as long is because i want to keep the invoice number right there and of course i also want to keep the customer name i'll say dim customer name as a string i also say dim customer id as long deem sales rep as a string then i also say deem invoice amount as currency i also say deem invoice date as date deem the term as a byte i also say deem file path as string simply because i'm gonna be creating a document link here and i also say deem file name as string and then because i'm gonna be creating a copy of this invoice i do not want these shapes to come along i just want to pick only the invoice details and these buttons should be eliminated in the copy that i'm gonna be creating so to do that i'll still come back here and say deem shapes as a shape and now i need to declare which ranges i'll say deem next rec as range down here we need to start declaring the actual values to store and of course for the invoice number this will equal to which value i'll open the range so which range am i looking at of course when you look at our invoice template here invoice number is sitting in cell k11 so i'll come and declare k11 here open double quotes and say k11 and for the customer name this is actually sitting in which cell address i will confirm so the customer name is actually sitting in f13 so i'll just come back here and declare this cell address in here 
open double quotes f13 how about our customer id of course this one is sitting in which range our customer id is sitting here in h12 and for our sales rep name it's actually sitting in let me just scroll down to confirm it's actually sitting right here i think this is f39 so this will be the range it's actually f39 and our invoice amount is in which range let us confirm that it's actually sitting in our sale address k38 as you can see right here k it's actually k37 and our invoice date is sitting in which range i just scroll up here and this is sitting in right here in k12 so i'll say double quotes k12 and our term is sitting in which range this is k14 and for the file path this will equal to the specific folder that we are picking to keep these records of invoices so what i will do before i actually provide the file path i'll go to that folder so i'll just navigate to the folder that i've created right here so this is the folder where we want to keep all our records of invoices i'll just tap up here so if i want to get the address for this folder i'll just double click on it and then click in here you see this is the address of this folder so what i can do is to copy Control c close the address and then come here and declare it here i'll say for our file path this will equal to i open double quotes and then Control v and make sure that at the end of this folder you add a forward slash like so and then close double quotes for the file name this one will equal to a concatenation of the invoice number and i'll add a hyphen in between like so and concatenate this with the customer name all right so let's move forward with our vba line of code now because at the time of saving this invoice details to our records of invoice here i want to simultaneously also create a pdf copy and then i'll deposit the link in this particular cell address so what i will do is i'll go back to my vba editor here so i'll come here and say active sheet dot export as fixed format type this should equal to excel type pdf comma and because during this export what i want to do is when i come over to invoice template here i only want to include the printable area here so that i can ignore the icons up here so what i will do is to highlight this entire range as you can see up to somewhere here and what i will do is to come over to the page layout and set this as a print area i'll make sure that the scale here is also fit so i reduce it to around i think this will go up to 70 and now when i head over to the vba editor i'll make sure that i set the print areas to false ignore print areas so this will equal to false comma and the file name will equal to the concatenation of the file path and the file name now what i need to do is to point this macro to which exact row inside this particular worksheet it should deposit the next record so i'll go back to my vba editor and in here i'll say set next rec so this should equal to which sheet are we going to be using so we're going to be using sheet uh, let me confirm here so the sheet that has our invoice records is actually sheet number four so this will be sheet four dot range so i'll use the first column that will be column a and i want this particular macro to move to the very last row in that particular range which will be one million forty eight five seven six close brackets dot and then i want it to move up again so i'll say end 
and close brackets I'll say Excel up here we shall use the offset function so we shall move down one single row and let us not move any columns so I'll put a zero and close the offset from here so I'll say next rec and this one will now equal to the invoice number so ideally what I'm doing here is I want to start depositing the invoice number in this column address but then how the macro finds out the next available empty row is to first move down control down like so so when it moves down and then it goes up control up it lands onto the last cell that has a record in it and then it moves one step forward that is the statement that we have just written here okay now for us to bring in our customer name we shall use the offset function to move from column a to column b to column c and so on and so forth let us go back to our vba editor i'll say next rec dot offset and inside the offset function we are not going to move any row so i'll put a zero only that we're going to be moving one column so that we can move from column a to column b so i'll put a one here close my offset from here so this will equal to customer name so you want to deposit the customer name details here if you want to bring in the customer id i'll say next rec dot offset i'll open brackets of course we shall not move down any row so that will be a zero and we want to move to column C so I'll put a 2 close brackets from here so this will equal to customer ID similarly for the rest of these other columns I'll just copy and replicate this copy and paste I'll just change this one to 3 and instead of customer ID here this will now be sales rep I'll move down control V and I'll change this one to a four that means I'm moving to column E so I will call this one invoice amount control V down I'm moving to five and that simply means I want to bring in my date of issue so I'll come here and change this one from customer ID to invoice date control V I'll change this one to a six you'll notice that in our next column we need to bring in our due date here so the due date will be a simple calculation here so what I will do in our next line of code here I'll just control V and in our next column what we need to do is to bring in our due date which will simply be the invoice date plus the term and of course for our invoice status we're gonna be configuring this one manually so our next line of code here will be bringing in the date and time of creating this record so I'll just come over here and say next rec dot offset and in here instead of actually printing this in our next column because our next column has the invoice status we shall jump these two and move over to the last column so this one will be column number nine and this will equal to because this is gonna be automatic I need to use the now function so I'll say now all right now the last line of code that we need to write so that we can end this macro is to bring in the hyperlink that will link to our created PDF document and we want to print it right here so I'll just come back here to my VBA editor and I will open this line of code like this sheet 4 because sheet 4 has our records of invoices dot hyperlinks dot add so I'm gonna be using an anchor here so this will equal to next rec dot offset let me expand my VBA editor and inside our offset function we don't want to move any row down so I'll put a zero comma but would like to print this hyperlink in which particular column so I will count here my columns of course the last one was column 9 so this particular document link column I will be 8 I'll just come back to my VBA editor and declare that particular column number which will be 8 
close brackets comma and the address itself this one will equal to the file name let us use the file name and concatenate it with i'll just open double quotes dot pdf now it's time to actually test this particular macro so i'll go ahead and save this macro and close my vba editor now when i head back over to my template right here what i will do is to pick this particular button right here that i've just created using shapes right mouse click and then i'll say assign a macro so the macro that we have just created right here we called it record of invoice so i'll just pick this macro and say okay now let us test this macro if it's working we have our existing invoice that we assume we have generated now if i wanted to capture the details of this invoice and add them inside the record of invoices worksheet i just tap this particular button like so and watch what happens of course when i check over in my records of invoice i can see this record has been created i can see the invoice number the customer name the customer id the sales rep is not coming through simply because we have forgotten this one in our code but we shall go back and amend our vba code to include the sales rep but you can see the rest of the values have been able to print here and our document link you can see we just declared that it should be the invoice number concatenated with a hyphen as well as the customer name let us go back to our vba editor and bring in the sales rep as well so i'll open the vba editor right here and double click in module one and i have just realized that we missed an s here so i'll just add an s wherever there is sales rep including this one here having made the changes to our sales rep i think we had missed an s now let us actually save this macro and close our vba editor when i come back here maybe i'll just change the customer name to someone else like so and then i'll say add to records let us see if the sales rep name this time will be captured of course it does you can see all these other columns have their values in the only column that is missing a value is this particular column here which has our invoice status so what we want to do here is to print either paid so that we can track how many of these invoices are paid and how many of those are not yet paid so what i will do i'll highlight a number of sales here so let me just highlight from h2 all the way through to h1000 what i'll do i'll add a data validation here i'll say alt dl and in here i do a data validation list so i'll add paid as a status and then say okay so you can see our status here is either paid or if it's not paid then there will be nothing okay and we also want to implement here a conditional format so that all invoices that are overdue should be highlighted in red so for us to achieve that particular conditional formatting we shall need to ask three logical questions the first one is to examine this particular column if the status here does not equal to paid and the second logical test will be to check if the due date is less than today and the last one we want to make sure that the invoice number column here does not equal to blank okay so i'll highlight the range of cells that i need to implement this conditional formatting in so i'll actually use this particular name box here so i highlight from a2 all the way through to j1000 and hit enter key on the keyboard head over to conditional formatting new rule and we're gonna be using a formula to determine which cells to format so this one will be equals i will use the and function here and i will need to ask a question is this particular cell here not equal to the status of paid comma and the second question i'm gonna be asking here is the due date less than today and the last one we want to make sure that our column a here does not equal to blank so i close this from here so i'll make sure that in this particular entire formula some of the cell addresses are not absolute so what i will do for the first one i will move the dollar symbol of the row 
and similarly for g2 i'll make sure that i remove the dollar symbol of row number two as well as in column a i'll make sure that we remove the dollar symbol of row number two and in here i'll implement a format so i'll go for a fill color i need this one to be red and for the font i'll make it bold and let us make it white so that all those unpaid invoices are easily identified i'll say okay and there you go now let us test if our conditional formatting is working i'll come over to the due date here and make sure that this one is less than today maybe i'll manually punch in here first of jan 2024 and i'll make sure that the status here is is not paid so i remove the value and there you go you can see this entire record is highlighted simply because that due date is less than today and the status here is not is not paid once i change the status here to paid you'll see the red background of fill color is gone now when we head back over to our invoice template here you can see we have only created a macro for only this particular button here that is able to pick details of our invoice and add them into our record of invoices database here now our next task is to create all these other macros for the buttons that we have here but i'm only scared of the time that we have so far used so what i was proposing is that in our next class we should be able to come back and finish all the macros that we shall assign to all these remaining buttons right here otherwise for now i'll head over to the comment section and check through if we have any questions that we need to answer and in case we do not have so many questions that we need to answer i will end the class from here and wait for you in our next session where we actually complete this entire invoice by writing these other remaining macros and assign them to these buttons but in case you want to grab the finished product of this particular invoicing tool please head over to the description of this video click the link that i've provided and get this particular template start using it straightforward or you can actually give feedback on what are some of the functionalities that you'd like us to add into this invoicing template otherwise it's been nice having you today from the rest of my team and myself it's a good night bye bye